Hey, it's Tanya from My Fancy Design Shop, and today I'm going to go over my new Life with a View landscape set for Procreate. Uh, in this set, it's a total of 63 brushes, and they're all organized in four different sets. So you'll have your shape set, which comes with four different base stamps, which you'll use as your background and three moon stamps that I hand painted myself with watercolor and I turned them into stamps. So they will have, I'll show you right here, that already you'll see the highlights, the water stains and the dark edging already built into them. And each one is just a little bit different. Then you also have my brushes. So I included my mono line to help just color in the stamps like the background and the mountains. I also included my dark edge and highlight blender to help with blending. I like to use my dark edge blender as a smudge tool right up here to blend in my uh, sky. And then the highlight blender to add some highlights to the mountains and the moon. I also included my new two new stamps like my color stamp and my color blender. And I'm going to show you a little bit later on, but this, the color stamp is great to use as a brush to kind of stamp in different colors. I tend to use this brush on the moon and the mountains to add a little bit more color. And then if I wanted to blend it in, I'll use the color blender as a smudge tool. So how to do that is you want to hit this pointer finger and just click on that brush and you'll be able to blend with it. And then I also have a comet. Uh, a star, I guess like a twinkling star, and then two uh, stars stamps. So this one's more of a spray. They're all the same the same size, very small. And this multi-star stamp is a few different sizes. And then I also included my seamless wood brush, which is great to use as a background. Now I didn't use it on this background, but I'll show you a little bit later um, how to use it. And then I have my mountains. So all of my mountains, as well as my trees, I hand painted with watercolor and then I turned them into stamps. So what's great about these is that if you wanted to create a digital landscape, you don't have to worry about trying to get it as realistic as possible because um, you have it right here. So you have, you know, the, the background mountains are a little bit lighter. And as you come forward to the foreground, you'll have a darker mountains here. And they all have that dark edge of how the watercolor dried. And each stamp is different. So there are uh, four layered mountains that you can use. I'm just gonna stamp some on so you can kind of just see them. So you see how it has the lighter mountains and then they get a little bit darker. Then you also have individual mountain stamps. So with these, you would want to build, kind of build your own layered look. So you don't have to have multi-layers. You can have two, three, or even more. It really depends on your preference. A lot of them are angled. So like this one up here is angled from the right down to uh, the left. So what I tend to use is use these as my background mountain layer, if that makes sense. But if you didn't want to start from the right to slope down to the left, you just simply click on this arrow and you want to flip horizontal and that's it. So very easy, but gives you a lot of flexibility to build your mountain landscapes. And next uh, is my trees. So all of these again were hand painted. Yep. So you can see, let me zoom in, the texture from the watercolor paper, some water stains, um, some areas are lighter and darker. So very realistic, um, a bunch of them that you, uh, different styles. Again, you can resize these. I like to, um, instead of using the size tool over here, I tend to just stamp it on and I use the arrow and I resize it that way. And so you have about, let's see, 17 individual trees and then a few grouped trees. So like this one, so I already have them already in a cluster. 
So it really depends on the look that you're going for. Okay, so here I'm gonna use my square base and I'm just gonna stamp that on. Well, number one tip is you wanna alpha lock it and then you wanna grab your monoline brush and just color it in. Now there's different ways that you can color. You can just go straight up and down and then overlap your colors. And what you wanna do is concentrate more on the top half because on the bottom you're gonna add your, your mountains and your trees. Also, you can just, let me go back to here. Now I know with this I added the mountains and the trees, but if you just wanted the trees, you can use that. If you just wanted the mountains, you know, it's very, um, it's all up to you. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to this stamp here. So I'm just gonna pick some colors. Now you can go horizontal and one way to blend it, what I tend to do is go to this smudge tool, grab the dark edge blender and sometimes you, you wanna work with the different sizes and the opacity. And what I'll do is I'll just work in circles, kind of move things around and I'll blend like this. And so that way I have more um, control as to how it's going to look. And I do like that kind of like a cloud look. So that's one way. So let's do another one. Let's grab the stamp again and we're gonna make sure we're alpha locking it. I'm gonna use the same colors Grab my monoline brush. Now another way is you can kind of go on like an arch. Or you can actually kind of go in a circle a little bit. Like that. And then you can go in and you can blend and you'll have more of like a, an arch effect. And then you just want to go around. Again, you don't really have to worry about the bottom half. I mean, if you want to blend it in, but you're going to end up covering that. But then that gives a really cool effect here. If you kind of just look <laughs> from this and up. Another way to blend, you know, let me keep these so they're side by side. So I could definitely, I could show you the difference. So I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna show you a different way on how to, to blend these without using the blender. Okay, so now I, I did two um, new ones. I stayed with my horizontal lines and this one I did more of a circular. Now another way to blend if you didn't want to manually blend with the smudge tool is you wanna make sure you're on that layer. You wanna make sure that it's still on alpha lock. That is important. And what you wanna do is go to the adjustments, go down to Gaussian Blur, Layer, and then you're going to move your Apple Pencil or your finger to the right, and you'll see it slowly blend. Okay? Now I wanna show you what happens if you don't have Alpha Lock on. If you don't have Alpha Lock on and you try to blend, it's gonna go all over the place. So again, make sure alpha lock is on. You'll see like a checkerboard on that layer or you'll see it, a check mark right next to it. And add your blur right there. So you see how it's a little bit different in texture. When you do use the smudge tool with a dark edge blender, you're gonna have a little bit more texture, more of a, like a cloudy look. And then this will be smoother. Same thing with this one. So you wanna make sure alpha lock is on. You go to blur, layer, and you're gonna move your Apple Pencil a little bit and you will see how it starts to, oh, to blend. So those are two different ways. Let me show you my color stamps. And I plan on also videoing like a little project, a follow, follow with me project um, to help give you a better understanding. This is, I'm just gonna go over just the basics of the set. But 
with the color stamp, I'm going to use my mountains. And let me just do this guy right here. I'm going to enlarge it. You want to make sure alpha lock is on. Okay. I'm going to grab a lighter color. And what I want to do is go to my color stamp. And again, you can play with the size, the opacity, and I am just going to stamp on the color. So do you see how you still keep that texture and the, the watercolor stains? And with the stamp, it kind of still gives you a really cool texture as well. And let's, let's pick this color. I'll show you how I blend it. So say I'm just going to start and add like a little bit of purple over here. Now you can stop there if you like that, or you can grab the color blender as a smudge tool. I like to keep the opacity kind of a little bit lower. I think right now I'm at yeah, 62%. And what you want to do is in light circular strokes, I'm not even bringing a passage on anymore, just I kind of blend it in this way. And you see how it's kind of moving the colors. So this is another way just to smooth out your blends if you wanted to. If you didn't want so much of that, that texture from the, the color stamp. Also, that's a great way to use with the moon stamp. Let me grab that moon stamp here. So you see how some of that texture and what you can do. I like to bring in some grays and I'm going to grab that color stamp as my brush. Let's see, you have to remember, make sure alpha lock is on. And you see how it kind of gives that really cool texture that you can see on an actual moon. And I like to get, I like to do like a darker edge on the moon. And then let's get in a different dark, deeper color. And that's just a fun way. And again, you can go in with your smudge tool and your color blender and just kind of move around the colors a little to get some texture. Oh, also I wanted to, I, don't, I didn't go over this before, but it, I also included my texture stamp, which is great to give a little bit more texture to your, your artwork. So this would be your last step. Um, so I always add it on the top layer. I set that layer setting overlay. So you see how this used to be on N for normal. You want to tap on that, go down to overlay, and you want to make sure you have the color black and you get your texture stamp. I like to be on also on a clipping mask. Tap on it and then you can resize it if you want. You can move it around and that gives you a really cool texture to it. So this is without and this is with. That also comes with my watercolor paper texture. So this is it right here. It has a really fun um, texture to it that you can use as your background. And you would just go to the actions, insert photo, and grab it out of your photo gallery. I also included a fun Polaroid effect. So this is a PNG file, which means it is transparent on the inside. So you can lay this right on top of your design. So say if we even grabbed our our moon that we just did, you can just resize it so it fits in there. And it's just in like another fun way to, to display your art. Um, oh, let me go over my seamless wood brush. So really quickly, what you would wanna do is you grab that and you might look at it and we'll grab a light color and think, oh, all right, hold on color in your canvas and I know you're thinking okay well I see the white I don't want the white background what you want to do on the layer below this one you want to grab a darker color so let's grab a dark like a darker brown and you want to fill that in now 
if you don't like this color, what you want to do is I tend to go back to my wood texture layer. I'll go to adjustments, hue, saturation, brightness, and to layer. And I will kind of mess with the saturation a bit, even the brightness I might bump up. And you see already you have like a more realistic look and effect. Next, you can also change the hue, saturation, and brightness of that background layer. That's just that opaque color. And so, you, so see if we bump down saturation, if we even darken it a little. So that's a great way also. Oh, and okay. So if you group these, okay, you can also enlarge it. And you know what? I'd actually prefer the snapping to be on like the magnetics. So it stays straight and you can enlarge in that to get a bigger like plank look. And so that is it. So this was just a really basic quick overview of my Life with a View set. Going over the different um, sets of, you know, the, the base shapes, the moons, all the different brushes and the stars, um, the mountains and the trees. And I will be planning um, kind of like a fun project video that I will upload to my YouTube channel. So watch out for that. And if you have any questions, um, you can reach out to me on YouTube or find me on Instagram. That's probably the best way at my fancy design shop. And yeah, just if you want to grab this set for yourself, all the links are down in the caption.